everyone. Welcome to Everyday Champions. My name is Beck, and we are a global family online serving local people in the name of Jesus. And we are so pleased that you have joined in with us today. You've tuned in to be a part of this broadcast. We're so pleased that you are here. If you're watching with someone, maybe in one of our rooms or at home, give them a, a fist bump, a high five, a hug, a hey. Uh, say that hello to those who are around you and jump over to our live chat where you can talk to people who are watching at this very time. And if you're watching this back, please still continue to comment because we want to hear what you have got to say and we're welcome and thankful that you have joined in also. We've got lots coming up in today's broadcast, uh, but I've got a few things I want just to share with you before we get on with what's got ahead. Uh, and we have commission coming up on the 11th of June. We are so excited about this commission and we want you to be there. So you need to get signing up. We need to know who is going to be there and how many are coming. So we need you to sign up. You can head over to our website, everydaychampions.tv slash commission, and you can get yourself signed up there. You can be in person in the room, and that is great because it's great to meet together. We'll be together with all of our Everyday Champions family from across all of our different locations, from wherever people are watching from, traveling in and being together on that day. But if you're not able to travel and be there on the day, we're also going to be on Zoom. There will be no broadcast on that Sunday. So if you want to be a part of it, but you're not able to be there in person, you need to sign up to be on the Zoom. And you can do that also over at the website. And if you have children aged three to 11, primary school age, we need you to sign them up also. We have got some provision on the day, but we need to know how many children we've got so that we can provide appropriately for them. So please sign your children up. So you can do that all through the website, everydaychampions.tv slash commission. And we are going to have a great day. And on that day, we are also going to be having baptisms, which is going to be amazing. We've already got a few people said that they want to be baptized and have signed up for that. Um, you can see, you can head over to our website. If you want to uh, be baptized, you can head over to our website and you can contact us or speak to your circle coach. And we can uh, have a conversation with you to see if we can get that organized. It is going to be a great day at commission. So we've got the sessions in the morning and then we've got the, the baptisms in the afternoon. It's going to be brilliant. So get yourselves signed up. And also today, I don't know whether you recognize the date, Today is the day of our expansive offering 2023. There are lots of different ways in which you can give today. It's going to be open for three weeks where you can, can, uh, can make sure that you've got your, uh, your gift uh, ready and processed in time. So, but today is the day that we are opening that. And you can give either through our website, everydaychampions.tv slash give, and you can go over to, that, over to that page and all the details are on there in how you can give online. You can give through our QR code. We're getting fancy around here. You can give through our QR code, which is on the screen right now. Or if you're in one of our rooms, um, you can uh, scan the QR code that will be maybe on your table or nearby. And you can scan that and that will take you directly to the give page. Uh, you can also give using our envelopes if you're in one of our rooms. You can give using the envelopes there. You just need to mark on it that it's for Expansive 2023. Uh, lots of different ways that you can give today. Uh, and we hope that you've spent the last few weeks prayerfully uh, thinking and deciding over what you're going to be bringing today. It's going to be a fantastic opportunity to show God that we're all in. We're all about this discipleship process, all about this discipleship journey, learning and growing together so we're going to give today, but before we do, we're going to head over to Gareth, who's going to uh, share with us a little bit more about this expansive 2023 offering and what it's going to be focusing on this year um, as we do every year. Um, and then we're going to go into the conversation from Gareth and Leanne. We've been having great conversations from them over the past few weeks, really challenging, and I hope that they have been challenging and helping you also. So let's head over to Gareth before we have the conversation. Well, today is our expansive offering 2023. I know the year has gone so fast. 
it doesn't seem like yesterday since we were having our impact offering. But trust me, it is a year on and <laughs> it is a new year. And a new year with fresh opportunity and fresh challenge. And, you know, at Everyday Champions, we don't kind of hide away or shy away from the fact that there is a challenge, but there is a great opportunity for God to do something. And, and in recent weeks, we've been sharing the challenge that we have on our journey. It's a unique journey at Everyday Champions. It's a God is doing a new thing. And with that challenge comes a, an absolute reliance upon God for his wisdom, uh, for for his guidance, but also for provision. And, you know, his provision it comes through his people. I believe that. I believe that he's given us everything that we need to make the mission happen. And so today we open our expansive offer in 2023. And as a family, you know, we are coming together to bring our sacrifice and it's important isn't it that it's a sacrifice i think there's two things you know that god looks for when we when we bring our offering and that's obedience and the right attitude the right heart you know he wants us to be a cheerful giver it, you know there's nothing worse than kind of giving reluctantly god does not want that that is not an offering that is not pleasing to him you know this is a, a cheerful giving this is thank you god for what you've done and and cheerfully but also in obedience you know it's important that we've kind of spent time saying god what do you want me to do what do you want me to give and and if giving to him is an act of obedience as well because he's told us to do it so those two things and and we do it cheerfully today we do it lovingly we and i often get excited about giving an offering it doesn't seem like that's a kind of a natural thing to feel but i get excited at giving into our annual offering and you know it's exciting because i really believe that we are on the verge of seeing that new thing that God is wanted to do c come into its kind of fulfillment. It's been many years on this journey of of, of understanding how is God going to use us as as mm. His church to to really bring about that that key core mission of discipleship, and that's what we're committed to. And I've referenced in recent weeks that 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 decision has come at a cost. You know, we are focusing. We're putting all our eggs in one basket called discipleship. Mm. And that focus has meant that we've had to cut off and cut back, prune uh, the things that, that were kind of becoming a distraction. Had been a blessing, but what was a blessing yesterday isn't necessarily a blessing today. Mm. And we, we've had to cut those off. And so now we're saying as, as a church, as, as a family, we need everybody. Yeah. It's not just for us to shoulder the burden. It's for everybody. If, you know, that's what makes a family member. We get to, yes, experience the joy of the family, but but joy has has a cost and a responsibility. And we invite you to experience the joy of the cost, the joy of carrying the burden. And so that's what we're going to do right now. And I'm going to pray in a moment and we're going to receive that offering. So if you're in a position where you can stand right now, then I invite you to do that. If you're watching this back or you're listening to it in a car, then obviously don't, you can't do that. But just, just, just create a moment right now, just as we are right now. We're creating a moment where we're, we're bringing our offering before God. And we're saying, God, take this offering as a sign of my faith, of expectance mm. for what you're going to do. Yeah that we are committed to this mission called discipleship. And this mission is going to bear fruit. This mission has a harvest attached to it. And the harvest sometimes may feel far off, but we believe that on the other side of this seed that we're sowing is a harvest. Mm. And that harvest is about people coming into the kingdom of God. But I also believe that there's an overflow that comes into our lives, our personal lives, our families. It affects us in every way in our in our finances, in our in our career, in our in our our health, in everything. So we're just gonna come with expectation and anticipation. So come on, we're gonna pray. Father, as we we hold this offering right now before you, whether that's physically, literally in our hands, or whether that is just right now in, in our focus in this moment, we come with this seed this costly seed, this seed of sacrifice. And Father, we thank you that you invite us 
to to bring our best. And Father, our best is not best compared to somebody else. It's best in relation to to what you've challenged us to bring. And Father, as we sow this now, we are believing that there is going to be an opening of growth, of fruitfulness, of disciples being brought into your kingdom. You're going to use every person that is coming in faith and with expectancy. You're going to use them on this journey to disciple others. You're going to use them in ways that they could not even have imagined. Lord, we believe that the other side of, of, of this sacrifice is a tremendous joy. And so right now we come with childlike faith full of anticipation. You are going to do exceedingly and abundantly more than all we could ask, think, or imagine according to your spirit that is at work within us. So together we say amen and amen to what you're going to do in us and through us through this expansive offering 2023. Amen. 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 And now we're going to go to the conversation. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another conversation where we are exploring the more that God has put in you and the more that he wants to bring through you. And I don't know about you, but this immersive conversation that we've been in for the last few months around expansive, around the more, has really helped me understand that I will never fully get everything God has got for me. Because just when I think I've found the next thing, there's more. (laughs) That's the expansiveness of God. I love it. And this whole conversation, this whole subject is really helping me push into that. I don't know about you listening to this if that is the case um why don't you let us know if you're watching this uh live or if not live just put it in the comments let us know how you've managed to unpack some of this in the last few months it's amazing isn't it because the more that you discover about who god is and who we are in christ the more you realize he has for us mm. and he wants to do through us and and i think that's maybe why he is the eternal god because there is no end to this more it's yeah. his very nature, you know, because at what point does more stop? It doesn't. There's more. <laughs> Absolutely. It keeps going. And that I just love that, that our God is so expansive. Mm. Everything that he wants to give to us is so expansive. However, it doesn't just land in our laps because that would make us lazy people. Uh, God wants us to get, get on this exciting journey together where together we work out what this more is. That's why he's put us in a family. That's why he's put us in church. Church is family. It's not the buildings. It's not the programs. It's the family. It's the people. And that's why we're in this together, this discipleship process together so that we can discover the more that God has given us. Absolutely. And that's what we're going to unpack in this session. Before we dive into the Bible and find the principles in the teachings of Jesus, we want to just look at our nature as human beings, as mm-hmm. you said, Leanne, that very often we can want something, but maybe not be willing to go through the process. In other words, we like shortcuts. Do you like a shortcut? I love a good shortcut. <laughs> if I can get away with not doing the absolute, you know, full process <laughs> and just get straight to the result. I, I absolutely would do it every time. In fact, I'm sure the app store, whether you've got Android or, or Apple um, device, if you go into the app store, I guarantee there are a million apps that will help you shortcut the process to get to the result by doing this one thing or, you know, whatever. Our lives are full of shortcuts because even there's a shortcut thing on your phone, isn't there? Well, there is for Apple can't speak for anything else but there's a whole thing called shortcuts right rather than going to look for it you can just press the button and take you straight to what you want we're all about saving time saving energy saving money and just cutting the process short to get to the shortcut now sometimes shortcuts are good sometimes shortcuts help us cut out the faff cut out the unnecessary to get to the point but very often I, I will want the result. I just don't want to go through the process. So I will just download whatever it is, whatever shortcut it might be to get to the, the end goal. 
Sometimes wanting the shortcut gets you into trouble, though. I mean, sometimes mm-hmm. when we're having a conversation, and I know this is kind of the difference between men and women. Is it this? They say men like headlines, women detail. like the detail, and and I've bravely slash stupidly at times just said to you, "Can you just give me the headline?" And you're you're painting the picture, the backdrop to this story. The detail is important. God is all about the detail. He's a detailed God. Therefore, we're made in his image. Detail is important. Headlines are not enough. Well, I was always taught the devil is in the detail. So I've avoided the detail. (laughs) But uh, yeah, I've stupidly kind of said, just give me the headlines. But of course, it's not about just getting the information, is it? It's the the intimacy of the conversation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I've so that shortcut gets me yeah, into trouble. Yeah, that is that's a bad shortcut. Another one is I think you know online everywhere is like take this tablet, lose two stone in a week. Take this supplement. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what tablet? Guess. I mean that was an exaggerated example. That's called a laxative. Wow. <laughs> lose two stone in a that week. Was a, that was a major <laughs> embellishment, a major exaggeration. What I mean. <laughs> <laughs> like there are supplements, tablets, you know, t- drink this drink every day yes. as a replacement for your food and you will lose weight. Well, of course you will because you're not probably going to get the right nourishment. But it's uh, very often there's a trade off. If you're going to have a shortcut, there's going to be a trade off and you're not going to experience, you know, actually the full result. It might be short lived. Sometimes those kind of just going on the weight loss thing. That's fine. Like, yeah, of course you're going to lose the weight, but you're probably going to be deficient in lots of things because of it. And it might be short lived. Yes. Like within a month, it's back to normal because you're not creating the right habits, the right things. But I, for one, if there was something like that, I'd, I'd do that. If I could eat all the donuts and still <laughs> still stay in, in shape, I'd be taking that tablet. But because we're like that by nature aren't we we just naturally you know when it comes to like cleaning things or we just let's just do a quick clean let's not do like get down where we have to like really do a full spring clean let's just quickly get through get shortcut the process so that we can get the result that is in our human nature so deeply and lots of like you said lots of businesses lots of apps are based upon that there was Mm -hmm. one app that lots of people were raving about and and at first i thought oh that sounds really really good and I won't mention it, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't get it, but... I'm intrigued it, now. Well, it's a, it's an app that essentially takes a book, however big the book is, and gives you the key points of it in, I think, 15 minutes or something like mm-hmm. that. So the whole idea is you can read more books in less time. Oh, okay. So, of course, that's a very attractive kind of concept. But I thought about that, you know, at, actually, you might get the information... But there's something in the process of the Mm. reading of the book, the digesting of the information, the kind of questions that you have as you're reading it that takes time. And actually, yeah, you're going to get something, but are you going to get the fullness because of the shortcut? So actually, and I've just thought about this, is the shortcut short changing you? That's a good quote there. Write that down, people. Is the shortcut short changing you i had a very similar conversation uh, with our daughters a little while ago they're doing their degrees you know and different things but i said back when we did ours back in the old days we didn't have computers didn't have the internet um it was very in very kind of beginning form we didn't have google in that sense so in order to find out the information you had to go and read the whole book <laughs> or go to a third year and pay them (laughs) to tell you the quotes that you needed for your essays but that's like we didn't have that you had to actually read the whole lot to find out the little bit that you needed but in the process you learn a whole lot so this is the first question that we want to ask because we're not the only ones who like a shortcut today (laughs) we want to ask you have you ever taken a shortcut to success for something you know and it can be a funny example it can be a serious example maybe you are a creature of habit that you actually like to take shortcuts on a regular basis um but let us know in the comments if you're watching online or discussing your groups if you're with somebody else and we will come back in a few moments and did it work oh and did it work or were you short changed oh yeah, yeah.
So we can all admit to looking for those shortcuts. And we are going to look at an incident between the disciples and Jesus. Disciples, I mean, I feel sorry for the disciples sometimes because their lives are there for us to examine, you know, every day and to kind of find all of the times when they fell short. There were times when they you know, did great things. Uh, and, uh, and you know, I'm not sure if I'd like my life to be constantly looked at every single day, but they didn't okay. get a choice. They were the original disciples. And we're going to look at a time when they were looking for a shortcut. And what was Jesus' response to that shortcut? And this is why I love the disciples. I know it might, you might think it's unfair that their you know, the whole lives were on display. I'm very grateful for it. The same reason I said last in our last conversation about Peter, you know, mm. he sank on the water. And I'm grateful that he did because it helps me um, learn a lesson. It helps us take his example of, of failure, or perhaps getting things wrong. And it makes me go, oh, right, mm. I need to do this to put it right. So I'm grateful for the disciples. And one day in heaven, I'll tell them that, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, let's look together in Mark uh, chapter 10 and verse 35 and we're going to read a story where Jesus just come out of telling one parable and he goes straight into teaching the disciples a real life example of what he's just been talking about so in verse 35 it says this then James and John the sons of Zebedee came to him teacher they said we want you to do for us whatever we ask that's quite a bold statement oh Jesus I want you to do whatever I ask for you I mean, if if our children came <laughs> and said that to us, you know, you, go, you, well, you, hang on a minute. <laughs> you know that the request <laughs> is something like out there or something that they're worried that we're going to say no to. It's a yeah. blank check, isn't it, really? Yes. Here, sign this, Jesus, and we'll fill in the rest. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it's, it's bold, which I love that. Jesus wants us to be bold with him, but it's a little bit audacious and kind of yeah cheeky little disciples <laughs> i want you to do whatever i ask for you anyway let's carry on and then jesus replies what do you want me to do for you he asked they replied let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory you don't know what you're asking jesus said can you drink the cup i drink or be baptized with the baptism i am baptized with we can they answered Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must become your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So lots of kind of cheeky um, conversation going on there from the disciples. Jesus, I want you to do whatever I ask you. Then they say, actually, I want like one of us, James, to sit on the left and I'm going to sit on the right in heaven. We're just going to be with you. Can we can we do that? They wanted to have that position of, of kind of authority and exclusivity. They wanted to be with Jesus, which I understand that that kind of hunger and desire. Um, and then Jesus replies and says, you, like, you don't know what you're asking. Basically, you want to sit in the same position as me and totally shortcut the journey to get in there. In other words, Jesus, the only reason he was in the position that he's in is because he was willing to be that servant king for us. He laid aside all of his majesty, all of his splendor of heaven, came to this earth as a baby to grow up. He knew at this point he was going to have to die. That's what he was talking about, the cup and the baptism. In other words, I'm going to have to, to take something you know, which obviously then there's that whole thing of the communion. That's why we take communion, the, the blood that was shed for us. He was going to have to, that cup was, was for Jesus and the baptism, everything that he was going to have to experience that he's saying to them, are you saying that you're willing to go through the same as me in order to have the same result? Then they go, yeah, we can. Totally oblivious <laughs> to what Jesus is talking about. And then Jesus goes, well, all right, then, yes, you are going to have to suffer and you are going to have to go through the things that I go through. So real audacious statement from the disciples. Now, I think 
This is showing their correct desire for them all. They're just hungry to be with Jesus, to have everything that, that Jesus has on offer. They have a hung, they have the correct kind of, um, kind of their, their motive was right. They wanted to be with Jesus, but it was the wrong order. It was the wrong way of asking. And so the first thing that we want to kind of talk about and pull out of this whole conversation is we need to position ourselves correctly for the more, position ourselves correctly. Because I think James and John here, they wanted authority. They wanted power. They wanted status, really. You know, we're sitting next to Jesus, that kind of thing. And they assumed that Jesus could just grant it for them. But the, it was the right hunger, but the wrong approach. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it's interesting because there's another account where actually, uh, and of the same scenario, but where their mum was involved. <laughs> yeah. So not only have you got some cheeky little disciples, but you've got a pushy parent. <laughs> And that combination is uh, is quite uh, quite it's kind of difficult to manage. So you know, it's really interesting watching how Jesus kind of deals with this kind of maverick behavior. And you know, that's the amazing thing, though, isn't it? About Jesus is he he tells us to come as we are. He mm. knows that we are not the finished product, but he can see the finished product yeah. in us. Uh, but he realizes that we've got to go on a journey. Mm. And so, like you said, there there was there was a seed, a kernel of, of right desire. But it's a bit like gold that needs to be refined. The gold is there, but it needs to go through this process of being refined where all the dross is burnt away. And part of that dross, I think, as I've looked into this story again over many times and, and I've read also kind of commentaries on it, we often assume, looking back at this story, that the disciples could could, could see exactly mm-hmm. what we can see. You see, we're looking back at this from a, almost a point of completion, aren't yeah. we? You know, what yeah. Jesus actually went through. At this point, he hadn't gone through it, but he was referencing the fact that he's going to go through it. And so the, the disciples were still kind of working through this whole idea of the kingdom of being this physical kingdom. Mm. In other words, that... Jesus was going to have this status yeah. and that because they were his crew, you know, they were hanging out with, 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 with Jesus, that they were looking to almost jostle for position to make sure that when that time comes, you know, when, when, when you come into your glory isn't necessarily just a reference to when you get to heaven. Mm. It's the glory of a kingdom. Yeah. Uh, every kingdom, every earthly kingdom has a glory. And, and so I think they're looking at this Almost through an earthly lens, yes, they know who Jesus is. Yes, there's that seed and kernel of a right desire. But I think the parent, the pushy mother, I think she could see an earthly kingdom. I think to some degree, like you said there, there was a status here that they could almost mm-hmm. see was up for grabs. And let, let, me, let me get my name on that seat now. So I think, yeah, they were, they were trying to position themselves. And at the heart of that, there was a right desire but there was a wrong approach because actually yeah. I think they were looking at it through a wrong lens. And we see that so much in the world today, in society mm. today. It's like, if I can just be with that person, I'll get where I want to go. And then you see, um, essentially, relationships built on really dodgy foundations because it's all about self-serving, self-seeking. You know, if I can just be mates with them they can get me this. You know, very often, and I've been to lots of events, both Christian and and not Christian. Oh, it's it's not just in the world, it's in the church as well. In fact, sometimes even more because we can dress it up as something spiritual where, you know, there's that term hobnobbing, you know, or like you'll have a network session and that's really important. Hobnobbing, that's a very British... (laughs) Anybody who's watching this in the US, uh, hobnobbing... (laughs) And hobnobs are biscuits, and I do love a hobnob. (laughs) Anyway, we digress. Um, But it's that kind of, I've got to go and rub shoulders Mm. with the right people to get me where I need to be. Now, networking in its truest, most wholesome form is brilliant because it's important for us to rub shoulders with 
brilliant people, with with great people, people who've gone ahead of us. It's so important that we get around like-minded people or people who've been on the journey longer or further than us so that we can have something of their life and their experience deposited in us. That's part of discipleship. But when it turns into I'm networking, so I can take your card because actually you're gonna I'm gonna put it in my back pocket because you're gonna be useful for me later on to get me where I need to go. We have just entered really dodgy territory. And essentially I see a little bit of that in James and John here. I don't want to, you know, paint them in too bad a light because I don't think it was that bad. But like you said, it was the seed of something wrong because it's that well, Jesus, I know you. You can get me to great places. You can get me the more that I want without realizing that they already had the more because they had Jesus with them. He is the more. Absolutely. And so they were, they kind of skipped that whole process. So this whole kind of point we've got here about positioning yourself correctly is not about getting around the people who can get you where you want to go. It's not about twisting God's arm or manipulating him or convincing him that he needs to do what you want him to do. Position ourselves correctly and we're going to move on to more of this looks like an attitude of the heart positioning ourselves is not about status and who we're with but the state of our heart and the state of our spirit and our soul and on a daily basis our habits and our kind of practices and our experiences need to be based around that not something else and I find that really sad that probably a good proportion of relationships today are based on that that what that person can do for me to get me where I want to be. Absolutely. And that's what's going to make us stand out. Mm -hmm. And I think as we come into an interaction question here, you know, the, 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 the seed that they had, which was right, was, like you said, this recognition yeah. of significance because the kingdom is the kingdom of significance. Yeah. It is that you are called for more. Yeah. You are going to be used to be more, to do more and to have more. But the process here was one in which they were trying to strive for it mm. rather than mm -hmm. simply receive it. And that requires humility. And I think it's C.S. Lewis who said, you know, humility isn't thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. And so the great thing is they weren't thinking of themselves as worms or we're nobodies, you know, that, that was good. So that's the good side because some of us struggle from that mm. and we need to repent of that. We need to say sorry to God that we're kind of devaluing ourselves. But the part that they had to learn was that sense of thinking of themselves less. And so the question we'd like you to interact over is this, what does it look like to position yourself and ourselves in humility and servanthood in your context? What does it look like to position yourself in humility and servanthood in your context?
So hopefully in your discussion, you were identifying the importance of desiring to make progress and to grow and not to diminish yourself. But at the same time, the way that we go about it needs to be different. It needs to be light. It needs to be salt. It can't be jostling for position. It needs to be serving our way to the top, as it were. And so, Leanne, in this passage particularly, you know, what we capture from Jesus is what some have referenced as servant leadership. Mm. Servanthood is one of those terms that I think sometimes we get mixed up with. Again, we kind of think it's being a doormat and actually it's actually far from being a doormat. It's actually valuing ourselves more. Absolutely, because it's the process by which God has created for us. So of course it's going to be good for us. And this is kind of the second thing that we want to bring out of this whole uh, conversation is that we need to prioritize others correctly for the more. We need to prioritize others correctly. And Jesus kind of shows instantly how we can uh, be like him. He shows us straight away. It's actually prioritizing other people above ourselves. And like you were saying in humility, it's not about thinking that we're nothing, you know, rubbishing ourselves and suddenly self-bashing, all of those things, because that's just ridiculous. We are made in God's image, but it is about prioritising other people above our own desires. And I think, like we said, Jesus examples that and shows that really, really carefully, because actually putting others first is actually the gateway to receiving more. Mm. That is the pattern that God has set for us um, on this earth and he even there it says that Jesus came to not to be served but to serve the servant king that's who he is now you might think that that's almost like an oxymoron a servant king because a king has servants but he is the servant king he is king of kings lord and lord, lord of lords and yet he came to serve the very people that he created mm. so we're not just talking about a king over you know a uh, kind of a country who then serves his people God actually created you, created you and me, and yet he chose to be our servants. Mm. That blows my mind. The God of the heavens and the earth, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, he chose to come down in human form and be our servant. That is how he has showed us to prioritize others correctly. And I love there are two terms that Jesus uses um, to get this across and in in the Greek one is diakonos and one is doulos and those two words literally mean servant and slave they are two words that honestly I don't think any of us really aspire to mm, as, yeah. as human beings do we aspire to those words of a servant and a slave no they're associated with kind of being poor, being lowly, being nothing, being bottom of the pile, being last, you know, all of those things. That If you said to somebody, you know, on your CV, what is, it, what is something that you aspire to be? And you put, well, I really aspire to be a servant and a slave. They'd be like, 
you know, on a CV, what do you put? I want to be, one day I want to be a CEO of a company. I want to be a leader or a manager. I want to teach others. And that's, that's right. That is the right aspiration to have. But underneath all that, we need to really understand what those two words really mean. Diakonos and doulos, servant and slave, is not to be nothing, but allow ourselves to become nothing so we can kind of celebrate and prioritise others. Yeah, and I think I, I've been guilty multiple times of of thinking that I'm, or, or wrapping up what I'm doing as serving, but really at the heart of it, it was about <coughs> me. Mm. And I can look back now, and you know, this is why this is discipleship is is a process, mm. and so you know, we we must challenge ourselves, but at the same time, recognise not be too hard on ourselves because we we are all a work in progress. So if you're sat next to somebody right now, just tell them that they're a work in progress. You're a work in progress. Thank you very much. I was I was <laughs> <laughs> I was I was waiting for that. You can say it back. Oh <laughs> uh, well, I I'm think definitely you're, you're a almost work in you're almost there. We're just on the snagging process <laughs> now. You know, when a building is like almost done. Thanks. There's not many snags. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I I look back and and I think and I think sometimes we're just unaware. Mm. Honestly, I, I don't think that there there were times when I purposely set out to to kind of do something and and the whole thing was about me. I think it sometimes it's just in our in our lack of awareness, in our ignorance, Definitely. in our immaturity. And I think that's that's what we have with the disciples here. This is mm. why I don't think Jesus, you know, was harsh with them. No, I don't I don't think, seem berating them or kind of condemning them at all because that's not our Jesus. But yeah. at the same time, it, he's strong with it, how he comes back. Absolutely. It's like you you recognize based upon the stage of the journey, kind of, okay, this is the next lesson you've got to learn. And we mm. found that as parents as well, you know, when you, you, you realize, and it's easy for us to look back uh, or to look at children, it's easier for us to look at people that are not as far as on the journey as, uh, as us and forget that we went through that mm. and we had to learn that lesson. And sometimes we're like, why are they not learning that lesson? You know, well, uh, you know, I've learned it. Well, yeah, but you didn't learn it in like five minutes. Yeah, like yeah. it took you or took some of us years, and yet we're kind of wanting them to shortcut the process. Yeah. And so again, you know, there's there's this whole process where we need that humility. We need to, like David said, you know, uh, test my heart, test my heart, see if there's any mm. wicked way in me. We need to. This is something we were talking about in the MVP journey. Go looking for the gaps. And we've talked about this in one of these conversations. Looking for the gaps is about moving from ignorance to awareness. Mm. Because we can only bring before God what we become aware of. And repentance is that that process of becoming aware, not so that we feel bad about ourselves, but so actually we, we can reinforce how good God is and actually the image that we're created in. That Actually, we need to surrender that that version of us right now that is has got pride, which is jostling, striving, seeking to obtain, and actually seeking to obtain the very thing that has already been paid for us and prepared for us. As Jesus said, these are not positions for me to give, but these are positions the Father has prepared. So actually, Jesus is saying here, you know, you you don't fight for what the Father has already prepared. It's Two two quick things out of what you just said there before we move on to the final point. And number one is that I've heard this term and I've used this term and not had a problem with it until this moment, which is serve your way to the top. And I understand the heart underneath that, which is absolutely right. You serve your way to the to the top. But I'd still think that that's that was one step too far away from what Jesus is trying to say. We don't serve our way to get to the top. Because Jesus was essentially saying, hey, the results, thats th- you leave that. Yeah. You don't need to worry about that. You just do what I've asked you to do. You make yourself a servant and a slave, diakonos and doulos. You work hard on that and you will see what, what reward you get. We still think, oh, well, I'll serve my way because I need to get yeah. to that. And the motive is still wrong yeah you know and god doesn't god isn't fooled by <laughs> by our ways he doesn't go oh i didn't see that they were working so hard didn't realize their most god sees our heart more mm. than we see our heart and the second thing that, about that is about being self-aware and being self-aware is so so important but then we need to take one step further is not just be aware we need to do something with that awareness because i have been in this state and i've met others have been in that state we're so so aware of our 
issues, insecurities, problems, failings, but don't do anything with it. And when you are just aware of it, but do nothing with it, it actually can have a real effect on you mentally because then what it turns into is just, I'm rubbish, I'm nothing, I can't, I'll never get over this, it's just the way I am. So you're aware of your issues, but you don't. We need to turn that into, like you said, that prayer from, from David show me any offensive way and lead me. And that's the whole point. Then take me to a place where I'm going to be changed. So it's just two quick things. And really that leads straight on to the final thing that we want to bring out of this, this kind of conversation is that process is the key to the more process. That wonderful word that we all love so much. Hands up if you love process. Give us a shout. Woo! Yeah, I Sorry, can't. my hands are not raised. <laughs> I, can't, I can't hear you. But, <laughs> but saying that, I don't like process, but I know that it's right and I think that's what what we're kind of asked to um it's like lentils. lentils you know that they're good for you but oh. <laughs> you don't really like them odd. lentils you could have said broccoli or, or something else I actually like lentils Lent- what a strange thing to say I just thought of the most uh, abstract thing that is good for you and uh and but I don't I don't yearn for it I don't long for it I don't love it But hey, lentils, that's for somebody out there. You need to increase your uh, intake of lentils. (laughs) I'm going to put lentils in your food tonight. Wow, yes. That's because currently we're just a little insight here. You know, recently I had a blood test and I needed to, you know, I have these fine margins when it comes to cholesterol. So we've been looking at food types and all kinds of things, just in case you think, where did lentils come from? (laughs) I am thinking, where did lentils come from? It's because I've I've been researching. I'm desperate to try and find out which foods kind of reduce cholesterol, etc. Any handy hints out there, people? Throw it in the chat column, yeah? Any handy hints, kind of things that you found that work? Does lentils work? Um, Well, I'm I'm not sure. I think it's just good for everything, (laughs) lentils. Lentils is is the cure for everything, people. (laughs) I feel so thrown off the subject right now. But it's the process again. It's the process. I I want, I love getting the right result. You know, you are healthy because I'm a perfectionist. So if like one of my readings is not, I say perfect, you know, as close as I can get it, it really gets me down. And so then I, I, I have to then say, okay, do you know what? Back to the process. And actually, actually the process is good because you, you, you get more knowledge. And actually, you are extremely healthy, like we, in terms of like eating, exercise, all of those things. You're extremely healthy. And there's some things we can't help that are in our genes. We just can't, like our bodies are, uh, you know, subject to everything that's fallen in this world. We, we have stuff wrong with our bodies. And but that doesn't mean we go, oh, it's just the way I am. Yeah. So there, there's a spiritual process to that, that in our makeup, sometimes we can be a certain way. And we just go, oh, oh it's just, just the good way point. I am. You know, it's just my genes. I just accept it. I, I do everything else. No, there's still a process that we can go through to do the very best with what God has given us. And I think Jesus showed us shows us here really clearly. Sorry to move from lentils back to Jesus. Um, but Jesus shows us really clearly how Leaders are called to be servants and the first is called to be the last. That is simply the process. We should not be working our way to the top. We should be working our way to the bottom. And I don't mean that in in terms of like making ourselves nothing. God wants us in prominent places. He wants us in places of influence, but almost allowing God to take us there through servanthood and this other words, being a slave, like literally making ourselves at that position where we are serving others, putting others first, not out of what we can get. And so that's the process that that God wants to take us through. And if we look kind of in these verses, just before that, Jesus has been teaching about the rich young ruler. And sometimes it's about the one thing that we're not willing to let go of because we think that is our ticket to X, Y, Z. It's our ticket to more finance, a promotion, a better relationship a house whatever you know elite being a leader being a ceo there's this the one thing that i no 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 i'm not going to let that go and we're like a kind of just really wrestling with it because it's my ticket to the more when actually that's that's a wrong Mm. approach completely and so you know you can read in those verses before and jesus actually says to them because Peter's saying, we've given up everything for you. Surely, you know, that's enough. And Jesus says, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mothers or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. 
homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and fields, along with persecutions he puts in there. <laughs> You're also going to face trouble and in the age to come, in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. That's it right there. Yeah. And again, what's interesting is the reaction of the other disciples, because mm. the other disciples were indignant. I love that word, indignant. Indignant. How dare they? They were cheesed off. They were <laughs> They were almost at fisticuffs. Because it felt unfair to them. But again, the same issue that was that Jesus was trying to address in the in James and John, which essentially was FOMO, fear of missing out of... Last of week we had YOLO. This week we've got FOMO. YOLO, FOMO. <laughs> You're there with all the terms. <laughs> Rolo. <laughs> Um, but the thing that, that they James and John were, were fearful of missing out on those positions. Mm. But the others dressed up their indignation, or their indignation was address, dressing up, really, that they were fearful of missing out on what James and John had identified. You can almost see the tussle, can't you? Hang on, yeah, it's what like, about me? Hang on a minute, and I hadn't thought about position. How dare they go for those positions? Mm. Why hadn't I thought about going for positions? Um, <laughs> you know, you could, that, that's what human nature does, isn't it? And so really, as a group here, Jesus was teaching them, not just James and John, I believe, no. that there's, a, there's an underlying fear that causes us to look for shortcuts and to avoid process. And I, I've got to be honest, over years, I, there's parts of the, the, the Bible and particularly the, the sayings of Jesus and the teaching of Jesus, parts I love and parts of Paul's teaching, you know, you're more than a conqueror, you're an overcomer, you know, and, and uh, all those kind of great kind of triumphalistic, victorious uh, verses. But there's parts like this where it says, you know, those who, who give up, things will receive a hundred more, more times in the in in this present age and and in the age to come and it's like yeah i'd rather have stuff now you know and it's almost like this this binary thing mm. of you know i want i want the great outcome but i don't want the process why it's a lack of trust mm. i don't i don't trust and we do this and we do this in the church and i'm talking church to the capital c now but we're all in that boat in the sense that we can create this sense of, yeah, I'm trusting Jesus, but I'm going to try and make sure I kind of manufacture my route to making progress. You know, just in case, God's got a lot on his plate, you know, and I might need <laughs> he to... Forgets he forgets about he, me. Yeah, he needs, he needs a helping hand. He needs a little help to be kind of om, om, omni, omniscient and, and omnipresent. And, and the reality is there's a fear for each mm. of us right now that is causing us to opt for shortcuts which are shortchanging us. So yeah. our final question is based upon that and the question is this what is the one thing so this is very specific what's the one thing that you are reluctant to give up for fear of missing out or coming last being left behind so what's that one thing that you're reluctant to give up for fear of missing out or coming last
I'm sure there are many examples there that we can come up with, you know, in ways that we are kind of reluctant to let go of things. Um, but we need to keep that that really in the forefront of our mind. We have to surrender. We have to live at that that point of surrender. And I love that the message version of this this kind of passage in the Bible uh, refers this whole thing to as the great reversal. It's where the first will become last, the last will become first. Mm. The great reversal. We almost need to reverse our thinking. That is the kingdom of God. What we think in the natural is going to be the opposite in, in God's kingdom. And so where, you know, society, the world, where our friends will tell us to strive for, you know, get to the top, be the best. Let's just see how we can serve other people first. Let's see and be kind of sensitive to where God is leading us because he is about the more. He wants to get the more to us. It's not about us trying to strive for the more. We put these processes in place, go through the process, and we will experience the more. Yeah, and you can't do it alone. You know, the reality mm. is what we immerse ourselves in can really influence us. And so, you know, we're in the world, Jesus said, but not of it. Yeah. And so we have to be really conscious that wherever we immerse ourselves and the conversations, content, you know, whatever it is, it's going to have that pull towards going the world's way, which is yeah. you strive and you struggle to the top. Mm. And so we have to immerse ourselves in God's word. We have to immerse ourselves in an environment with people who understand the great reversal, yeah. who can challenge us when we're kind of convincing ourselves, yeah, this is okay, but really it's a shortcut that's going to short changes. And, and we're going to pray right now that, that the, the Holy Spirit will just help us to become so aware, will really sensitize us in the sense of really picking up on those moments when really we're looking for a shortcut. We're trying to avoid a process. And ultimately, God's processes are there for our good. They're there to protect us. And ultimately, they're there to promote us into positions of influence where God would have us be there at presencing him. Not about us. It's about him and his glory. So come on, we're going to pray. Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you that we are a work in progress. Thank you that you receive us as we are, but you love us enough to not leave us as we are. You want to take us on a journey of transformation. And so we thank you that transformation does have those ouch moments when we maybe realize that we do carry this pride, we do carry this this sense in which we're, we're driven by fear of missing out. And, and right now, we just say we're sorry. Mm. We, we repent. We change our thinking. We surrender ourselves in your presence, realizing that, that you have already prepared everything for us. You've blessed us in the spiritual realm with every spiritual blessing. We can't earn that. We can't earn anything that is of lasting value. It's already been given to us. It's our inheritance and so we position ourselves in a place of surrender right now. And we pray that each and every day we will position ourselves as servants who recognize that, that we, are, we are valuable. We don't have to have that validated, that you have validated it because you have called us. And so we, we serve from that place of value. We put others before ourselves. We, we seek to be that gateway for the more so that others can experience your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So take us and use us as a church. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to, to be salt and light. May the church truly stand out in this time when the, the darkness is getting darker. May the light get lighter and brighter. May the, the, the different way of doing things stand out that people may realize there is a way and his name is Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gareth and Leanne, for that conversation. Another 
great conversation, the more that's in us to come out of us and uh, to grow together, but to impact this world. I love those conversations that are challenging us week by week. And I challenge you to take that conversation into your week. Take that conversation into another conversation that you're going to have this week and encourage someone and help them on their journey. Well, we're going to continue our worship together today. We're going to take communion together. So if you're watching at home, go and grab some bread and some juice that you can uh, take with us together as we worship together and we thank God together. And actually, I'm going to read a verse or a few verses from a really well-known um, part of the Bible when we come to talking about communion. And it's in Isaiah 53 and it says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. And just that thought that Jesus has taken all of our sin, all of our wrongdoing, all of the things that I have done wrong, he is taken away and he laid them on him. He, he took them. He became sin, the Bible tells us. And we kind of think, how, how, how can that be possible? That Jesus took my sin, past, present and future, and nailed it to the cross. And my mind is blown by that. But I love the verse, if we skip all the way to John chapter uh, 19. And there is just one verse that I, I held that helps me understand that. And it says, when Jesus has received the drink, this, they offered him um, a mixture of, of, with vinegar and they, they brought it up on a, um, on a sponge for him to drink. And it says there, Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. To tell us stay is the, is that I believe is the Greek word. To tell us stay, it is finished. And he said, with that, he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Those verses we read in Isaiah 53, where he, all the punishment, all the sin, all the wrongdoing was laid on him. And he is by his stripes, by his, his taking on all of that, we are able to be healed. We're able to have this relationship with God. We're able to live in freedom. And when I read that verse in John 19, it is finished. It helps me to understand that the job that Jesus came to do, to disciple those men and to die for us on the cross, his purpose of being here, to redeem us, to forgive us, to take away our sin. It is finished. And today you may be sitting there, sitting in your, in your life where you're thinking, do you know what, there's just so much wrongdoing. There's so much sin. There's so much going on. I don't feel free. I can say the one word to you today, to tell us day. It is finished. Jesus took everything and nailed it to the cross. And so it doesn't have a hold on us anymore. We can live in the freedom that Jesus paid for with his life. And we can live in that freedom. And that's why we take communion every single week to remember that Jesus has taken our sin, to remember that he has forgiven us and he has given us a life of freedom. When we live by his his commands, his, his expectation, his desires, his plans, his purposes. We get to live in freedom. And all of our sin that was put on him now gives us freedom. It is finished. Say it over your own life. It is finished. So as I pray, we're going to take the bread and the juice today. We're going to say thank you to him for what he has done. Lord Jesus, we thank you that it is finished, that our sin, the punishment of sin, the eternity without you 
it is finished. It is gone. We can now live in freedom. We can now live in the eternal hope that we will spend eternity with you. When we come to you and we say that we are sorry. And we do that today, Lord Jesus. We come and we say that we're sorry for the things that we have done wrong. And we pray that we will forgive us. And as we take of the bread and the juice right now, you will help us to understand a little bit more how amazing your love is and be thankful for your love and your grace and your mercy, your kindness, your forgiveness. We are just so, so thankful and so grateful for what you have done for us. And we pray that you will help us every day to live for you, to honour you, to honour your name, to lift you high and to give you glory in Jesus' name. And Lord Jesus, we just Thank you that we can come and we can give to you. As part of our worship, we can give of our financial uh, income to you. Lord Jesus, you gave everything for us. And you just ask us for a tithe. You ask us for a tenth. And so today we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can come and we cheerfully give to you today. And we pray that you will bless what is given today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you do want to give today, you can head over to our website, everydaychampions.tv slash give, where all the details are on there for you to be able to give regularly as part of your monthly giving or offerings. But also on there today, you can give to the Expansive 2023 special offering. And that is uh, on that same page over on the website, everydaychampions.tv slash give, where you can give to that um, uh, special offering today you just need to choose the fund on the drop down box and be a part of what we're doing today in giving and celebrating what God is doing through this discipleship journey here at Everyday Champions we are excited that you are on the journey with us and that you are part of that family do not forget you can sign up for commission also head over to the website to do that as well make sure you get yourself signed up whether you're in the room or on zoom and your children also if they're going to be in person. Well, thanks for joining in today on this great broadcast. We hope that you have enjoyed being a part. We're glad that you have turned up and been here with us today. Remember today and every day, you are a champion and there is more in you than you think.